I'm on the air now. It says on air. Can you hear me okay? Okay, so we're all set. Uh, let's see. Yep. Okay. Okay. Hi, everybody. I hope you can hear me okay. It's John Nairati. I'm publisher of Wall Street Sector Selector. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, I've been listening to a lot of these as we've been going along. It's been interesting uh, material. We're going to talk about ETFs today and ETF trading and option trading. Of course, we always start these with a general disclaimer. Uh, you can read this for yourself, but uh, the main thing here is that uh, everything is uh, for informational purposes only, just my opinion. And uh, of course, there's always risk of loss in trading. It's not individualized uh, advice or investment recommendation. Uh, but we will try to uh, do as much as we can here to give you some uh, quality information uh, to help you with your own trading and, and to learn uh, <clears throat> how to be a better trader in today's uh, markets. Today we're going to talk about option trading, uh, particularly uh, the crisis in Cyprus. And then uh, everything we're going to talk about, though, does apply to any kind of option trading. So we're going to specifically focus on Europe, European ETFs and options, and then, and then how to trade uh, uh, options in general for other markets. The main thing about option trading, I think, is you want to find uh, markets that are moving. You know, it doesn't matter to us as traders if it's up or down but we need to have uh, action and volatility. So I'm always watching for areas that are uh, you know, becoming interesting to the wide range of traders and to, uh, that have uh, volatility. Right now, that's Europe. You know, we'll see these uh, rotate around. Sometimes it's gold, sometimes it's energy. But right now, we're seeing a lot of action in Europe with uh, the uh, ongoing uh, European debt crisis there. So we're going to talk about how this works, what it means to us, and, and how we can uh, profit. So we're going to talk about the crisis in Cyprus, so what it is, why it matters. We're going to talk about Spain and Italy. We're going to talk about uh, European ETFs and uh, which ones that I think are the best, and then specific strategies that we can use uh, in today's markets. So <clears throat> the European debt crisis, you know, has been going on for about uh, three or four years, since 2008. And basically, the fundamentals of this thing are that there's just too much debt in the world. We have these countries, the uh, Club Med, you know, Spain, Italy, Greece, Ireland, this rotating crisis. Slovenia is going to be up next, uh, probably next week. They're going to be looking to go bankrupt. So we have this problem of too much debt, and that for us uh, as traders creates opportunity because any time, you know, crisis and opportunity always come together, danger and opportunity come together. So what we have in Europe is a, a currency union. They're trying to be a... Uh, a union of states, but they're not. You know, they don't have the political union. They don't have a Congress. They don't have a Federal Reserve. They don't have a White House. And uh, we've seen uh, Ben Bernanke saving the United States over and over over these last four or five years. Uh, they don't have that. They have Mario Draghi, who's a sort of a smaller version of uh, Dr. Bernanke. He doesn't have the same horsepower to be able to uh, prop markets up the way that uh, the Fed and Dr. Bernanke have been able to do. So that creates opportunities for us. You know, every time you have uh, up and down motions as traders, we could take advantage of that. Europe is slipping into a deep recession. We see that all over every country over there, probably even including Germany now is slowing down. You have uh, depression area, depression era unemployment in uh, Spain and Greece. Uh, this thing that's happening in Cyprus now, everybody says, who cares about Cyprus? It's a little dinky country, and that's true. But the main factor there is is that threat of contagion because for the first time now, they've said, well, we're going to hit uh, depositors in banks to help bail in instead of bail out the banks. So if it can happen there, you know, it can happen anywhere. And so is there any place, anywhere, anybody that's safe? And I think you have to look at that and say the answer to all the three of those questions is really no. And so uh, I read yesterday Mark Faber, you know, he's the famous uh, Swiss investor, said he expects governments to eventually confiscate uh, you know, 20 to 30 percent of his wealth. So, if that's the era that we're heading into where there's really no institution or nothing you can trust, then for us as traders, we have to look at that and say, okay, how can we make money from that? And there are lots of different ways, and, and that's what we're going to be discussing here as we go into this. So why does Europe matter? It, it matters because in aggregate, the Eurozone is the largest economy in the world. It's bigger than us. It's bigger than China. It's the uh, largest U.S. trading partner. We do more exporting with them than any other uh, region of the world. So as they slip into recession, that's going to impact uh, the S&P 500, of course, since a uh, large percentage of S&P profits do come from Europe. 
uh, the gentleman just before I was listening in uh, towards the end of uh, uh, Glenn's uh, talk there, uh, predicting the decline in the S&P uh, starting next week. <clears throat> We've uh, gone short uh, first to cash and now moving towards short in the U.S. markets. We've been short in Europe here for some time. Uh, we see that same thing. Just on, if you look at, I always look at two sides of this: the technicals, which we talk a lot about as traders, and then the fundamentals. So you see fundamentally that we have our largest trading partner heading into recession. We see uh, China slowing down. The uh, uh, Shanghai Composite has been pretty much in a bear market. We see an interconnected uh, global banking system. Uh, all these banks are tied together. You know, the, uh, <clears throat> the shadow uh, market they talk about with the derivatives. The biggest problem I see really is the, uh, the possibility of contagion. If I were an investor in Spain right now, I'd be taking money out of uh, my bank in Spain, either going to gold or, or U.S. dollars or somewhere that was more safe because uh, this idea that it, it's a one-off in Cyprus just doesn't fly as far as I'm concerned. I think we're looking at the possibility of contagion being uh, significant, which would gen generate sort of an international layman moment where you have a you know, collapsing, cascading kind of a default uh, situation in Europe. And again, that generates lots of opportunities for us. Let's take a look at Europe in pictures. This is the uh, Vanguard European uh, Vipers. This is sort of an overall look at Europe. The S&P is the black line on top there, have it labeled, and Vanguard being the uh, candlestick red and black line on the bottom there. You can see how they track pretty much in parallel with each other, and, and you can see how we're joined at the hip with Europe, and that's why what's happening over there now is so important to us on a fundamental basis. You can see uh, S&P goes up and Vanguard goes up and vice versa. So right now, here we are in this topping phase. You can see those last uh, several bars here. We've got this double top forming both in the Vanguard and the S&P, which would again go uh, as a supporting kind of uh, uh, point uh, that Glenn made that uh, we are in a topping formation here in the S&P at home. And if we go ahead here, some interesting things happen. We see Germany versus the S&P. This is EWG, the Germany iShares ETF. Same pattern, it just tracks the S&P pretty much. You can see how these developed nations are now forming this large uh, consolidation topping uh, uh, formation here as we are in the first quarter of 2013. But here's where it gets even more interesting. You have Italy versus the S&P. Italy being EWI on the bottom, the S&P on the top. You can see the big, big divergence here. Italy doesn't have uh, Ben Bernanke behind them and, and even Mario Draghi. Uh, their economy is really in a complete shambles right now, terrifically high unemployment. They can't form a government. They're trying to form a government this week. Uh, the elections there, as you know, were uh, inconclusive the uh, last couple of weeks. So you can see how this is split off here from the S&P. So here's a real opportunity for us. We can say, OK, uh, Italy is obviously in a downtrend here, so that gives us an opportunity on the put option side of things. Spain is the same kind of picture here, big divergences from the S&P again. And Italy and Spain are not insignificant countries. They're large countries in the world, top 10 or 12 in GDP in the world, top two or three in Italy. Other than Germany, they're the most important countries. So you can see how this is unfolding here. We have the develop, the overall uh, picture tracking with the S&P, Germany, and then we have these split offs with these bigger countries, Italy and Spain, diverging. And of course, as you know, anytime we get divergences, that's a red flag for us. You got to see because divergences typically uh, cannot be sustained. One or the other has to change. In this picture, either Spain has to get better or the S&P has to get worse. So let's talk about the various European ETFs uh, for just a moment here. Uh, we've got uh, the Vanguard we talked about, which is the overall of Europe. And these are the big liquid ones that I look at. We have Germany, <clears throat> the Eurostock 50, uh, Britain, uh, the S&P 350, Italy, France, Spain, and then the EFA, which is uh, the overall region, and the VA, the Vanguard. So these are the most liquid, biggest uh, European ETFs that you can look at when you're uh, considering uh, investing in Europe or trading uh, European ETFs or European options. So what we're going to talk about here, more specifically, is tra uh, trading strategies for Europe. What we do is we go long and short <coughs> ETFs. We look at uh, the regions, the overall region, like the VGK and Europe itself. And we go to country-specific, uh, particularly like Italy and Spain, because they have the most velocity right now. All of these are optionable. You can go into your Charles Schwab or Thinkorswim account. 
and you can trade them just like you could trade any other uh, option in Europe or any other option that you want to Apple or the S&P or anything. And so you can do these either directionally or as hedges. So if you're a buy and hold investor or have positions in a retirement account, you can uh, use these uh, strategies to hedge those positions or you can take uh, directional bets and uh, <clears throat> say, okay, we expect Italy to go up or down and you can either take uh, positions in the ETFs themselves or, or in the options uh, underlying the ETFs. I included emerging markets in here, EEM. It's not really a part of Europe, but it's an important, uh, I think, tool in your arsenal. You've got to look at that. Emerging markets tend to be extremely volatile. EEM is uh, heavily focused in China. And so I include this uh, in my international kind of uh, bow and arrow quiver because emerging markets, uh, as we'll see in a minute, offer tremendous opportunities uh, for both the option and ETF uh, position traders. So let's talk about some strategies. Uh, RSI, uh, Glenn mentioned the 14-period uh, RSI. This is a real simple no-brainer thing. I don't think you have to be too complicated to be successful at trading, and I've often found that simple is better. And so if you look at this, we have a 14-period RSI, and we circled the extremes here, the, either the uh, <clears throat> overbought or oversold. And you've always heard the expression, you know, uh, selling to strength and buying to weakness. This shows you how to do that, and it, it gives you a very clear picture of where we have strength and where we have weakness. So starting at the left there, we have the RSI up in the 70 range there, the first red circle, and you can see then right below it how then it corrected uh, the uh, DGK corrected and then reverse downward. So same thing, then RSI is down around 30, and we see an up move. You can track all the way from left to right across this chart and see when we get to these extreme positions, how then the markets tend to reverse. And there's a easy explanation, an easy explanation for that, that Markets tend to be mean reversion uh, <clears throat> elements. So they're, they tend to revert to an overall mean. If you look at the average of this VGK, you can see it's moving around an average up and down. So when we get to these extreme levels, overbought or oversold, it's easy to say that uh, we can expect to move in the opposite direction. So that's a <clears throat> very simple thing. Anybody can do this. By the way, all these charts here are from stockcharts.com. Again, you don't have to spend a million dollars a month on a trading uh, a software package. These are free charts for a really nominal fee per month. You can get your own kind of portfolio setups, customized in any way that you want. And they also have uh, uh, all kinds of different indicators you can put on every kind of indicator you can think of. So you can take a charting package like this, combine it with things you learn from DTI and, and people like me, and put together uh, your own system uh, that really works. So this is a very simple uh, number one strategy, the 14-period uh, RSI. Really good for option trading, really good uh, for uh, position or swing trading in, uh, in ETFs. Number two is a faster moving version of this, a two-period RSI. So instead of, so you'd set up your chart, instead of the 14, it'd use a two. And you can see here how this is much faster moving. We're only looking here at a couple months, February and March. But again, the same principle, when it's starting from the left, when it's oversold below 30, you tend to have an up move when it's overbought, and you tend to have a down move. So again, very specific uh, forecasters of what's going to happen next. You can see here how right now, if you move to the far right end of that chart, on the two-period RSI, you're over 70. So right now, we're saying that uh, EEM, this is the emerging markets. I took this picture, I think, uh, on the 26th, so two days ago. It was overbought. It's had this little pop-up at the bottom. If you look at the bottom there, you've seen it pop up. And we can expect now that this would be a good time to uh, short ETM or to buy a put option, and that ETM is going to reverse and, and uh, correct downwards. So that would be how this works. Again, this is for a little faster trader up and down. It's not uh, these are pretty short holding periods. If you look at these, you're looking at uh, you know, just a matter of maybe a couple of weeks for each of these trades. So they're relatively faster <clears throat> than what we were just talking about uh, in the 14 period RSI. So. So here's a point and figure chart. This is the Europe uh, 350 IEV. Everybody laughs at me when I use point and figure charts because they're so old fashioned, but I like them a lot. This goes way back to the day of uh, Charles Dow. Uh, there's a lot of material out on these. You can study this and learn it. 
what this basically tells us is it takes out the uh, time and noise of a chart. So it just tells us about supply and demand. So when uh, we're in a column of X's, then uh, demand is in control. In a column of those, then uh, supply is in control. And then the blue and red lines tell us if we're in a bull or bear market. So right now, the uh, Euro uh, 350 IAV, if you look at this part of the right column, it's in a column of X's. So that tells us uh, demand is in uh, control. It has an underlying uh, blue uh, <clears throat> diagonal line there, so it's in a bull market. And its price objective there is uh, 51. So this would be a longer-term position, more of a, a position trade than a, a fast-moving day trading kind of thing. And it tells us that uh, point-and-figure charting expects uh, Europe to be in the bull market. The other thing about these you can do with the two-period, 14-period RSI and this, if you're a day trader, you can go in and put these on a one-minute scale, a five-minute scale, a one-hour scale. So you can actually use these same exact uh, ideas for uh, short-term trading if that's what you're interested in and what your style is. And again, as I think other presenters have said today, there's no uh, holy grail. There's no one perfect indicator that works. But when you see a combination of these things pointing in the same direction, that gives you a pretty good hint of, uh, of what might happen next. So number four is the MACD. This is very common. Everybody knows about MACD. I've done a tremendous amount of studying on MACD. There are lots of books about it. Again, all kinds of different periods. This is Italy here. So you can see how we've gone long and short Italy several times since last October. You can do these on any time frame that you want. You can do one minute, five minute, one hour, days, weeks, month. This is the daily. The longer out you go on these MACD uh, time frames, the less uh, the fewer whipsaws you're going to get. I found <clears throat> it tends to get more stable uh, the longer out you get. Of course, you get uh, uh, more opportunities for trading if you're if you're using the shorter term ones. I know guys who do MACD on uh, you know one minute or five minute charts, and they're in there all day up and down, and it seems to work fine for them. Uh, that's not my style, but it's a very reliable, very proven strategy. And so you can adapt this to your own, own style and techniques uh, doing that uh, any kind of different way that you want to. Then finally, another well-known one is stochastic. There, this is a little trickier, I think. Uh, this is Italy. you got to really study stochastic to understand what's going on here. Because you see all these little wiggly buy and sell lines. I don't use those where you get uh, the crossover buy and sell, buy and sell. I think you really get whips out to death if you do that. My experience has been, again, doing the basic overbought, oversold idea. If you're above 80, then that would be an overbought situation. You'd want to be ready for reversal down, and so you'd be going short. When it's below 30, you'd be wanting to uh, look for an opportunity to go long and uh, buy a call option. So stochastic, I think, uh, you have slow, fast, and a combination of those. Pretty tricky. If you're going to use this, you want to really study it and figure out what you're doing because uh, it's easy to get whips out around these if you're just using the uh, crossovers as a, as a buy and sell. Kind of sell. Let's talk about where Europe is today. This is the big picture here. We got VGK going back to October. We can see that uh, it peaked in about February, early February there. If you look at that uptrend stop, it's been coming down. We're in kind of this long sideways channel now below the 50-day average, uh, showing some weakness, still above the 200-day average, though. And we can see how uh, <clears throat> stochastic is turned down, MACD is turned down, and RSI is all turned down. So we can see here a trend of weakening in Europe. <clears throat> that matches up, uh, the technicals are a match up with what we just described earlier in the presentation regarding the fundamentals. So if you put all that together, we can say that uh, Europe is probably a sell right now. We'd be wanting to look for... Uh, opportunities in uh, put options or short uh, European ETFs, either in a cash account going short. And there are some inverse ETFs uh, in Europe as well. I want to talk about that just a moment. Uh, a lot of those are leveraged. Uh, the inverse ETFs are leveraged. You want to be really careful with those. If you're going to uh, use leveraged ETFs, you've got to really know what you're doing. They're rebalanced every day. They're repriced every day. So you can, it's easy to get some uh, significant tracking error on those. If just a few days. So if you're going to be leveraged and looking for leverage ETFs, you want to really have an understanding of how those work and understand that they're not really good uh, for long-term holding periods.
if you look at Europe, we can see opportunities as traders right now. It looks like Europe's going down. In our own uh, portfolios, our own trading at uh, Wall Street Sector Selector right now, we are on the short side of Europe. We have a put on uh, Germany, uh, EWG. We have a put on uh, M, emerging markets. And so we expect uh, more weakness Europe ahead. And we have a long position in the inverse emerging markets, the EU. So that's our view on Europe right now. And in, uh, as far as our view in the United States, still in sort of what we call the yellow flag status in this transitional point. We still have Dr. Bernanke behind us, but things do seem to be adding up against him, and I think we could see a, uh, a reversal here to a short uh, position uh, in the S&P 500 over the next uh, few weeks and months. Also regarding that, we're in the uh, situation now coming into the sell in May and go away period, the worst six months of the year, uh, statistically for the S&P uh, starting in April and going on to uh, uh, October. Here's Italy. It's in really worse shape if you look at this chart. We can see the RSI is declining, MACD is rolling over, stochastics are rolling over. It's also below its uh, 50 and its 200 day moving average. So we can say very clearly that Italy is in a bear market. Give us opportunities to short Italy, both put options and if you take a short position in EW. So let's talk about some overall option trading strategy. We've talked about Europe specifically. Let's talk about just some things that work in all different kinds of option markets. Number one, you have to define who you are. I think people make a big mistake here. Uh, you're maybe a day trader, a swing trader, a position trader. They're all different animals. You've got to figure out who you are, what your style is, how much time you have, how you want to do this. So start there. That's the number one thing. Figure out who you are. There are a million different ways to trade. Some work, some don't. But if you don't match up a trading style with your personality, uh, you're, you're going to fail. There's just no question. So that's the first thing. Figure out who you are, a day trader, swing trader, position trader, what, what your risk tolerance is. Number two, you've got to study and practice and do your homework. Uh, nobody starts out playing for the Yankees or the Red Sox. You know, you have to work your way up through the system. You have to learn and pay your dues. There was that book out recently, The Outliers. It takes a thousand hours to reach minimal proficiency in something. I think people approach trading like a quick way to make easy money and get rich quick. But it's not like that. It's a job. It's a profession. It's something you got to train yourself. You're here. I think you understand that. Uh, DTI does a great job of tra uh, training people to do that. You have to put in and pay your dues to be successful with this. There's no easy way around this. And I see people do this all the time. They've lost their job, whatever. They want to recoup the losses over the last jump in and make the quick buck. It just is not going to happen. So you're here. You've got great resources, uh, the DTI people, people like me. So do your homework and practice and study. And figure it's going to take a 1,000 hours before you're going to be good at this. Then you have to look at what to buy. I see people chasing just the craziest things. You know, you've got these 3X ETFs now, and, and uh, they try the uh, high-risk option play. Uh, maybe you've tried this, you know, so you buy a far out of the money, call or put, close in in time. That's just a gamble. You may as well go to Las Vegas and have a better time and, and get a couple of free drinks while you're playing the tables because if you're doing that kind of trading, uh, you're simply losing your job. And I don't think that's what people need to be doing or should be doing. So. I look at what to buy. <clears throat> I think about is it liquid, one, liquid deep markets, so you can get good uh, prices coming and going. Uh, the ETFs we talked about uh, meet that strategy, uh, meet that requirement. So you want to have liquid markets. When I buy an option or either call or put, it doesn't matter. I do the opposite of what most people tend to do. I buy it near the money. Or costs a little more, but gives you a lot more opportunity. Uh, and uh, a lot more uh, better percentage of making profits. And then I buy them uh, far out in time. My trading symbols are very simple, directional, up and down. <clears throat> so liquid, near the money, and far out in time. Like right now, I mentioned those options were in the uh, puts. I think they're out in June and July. And then every month, if they move in our favor, we'll roll them over and go farther out in time. And so it's kind of the opposite of what most people try to do. It doesn't have to be simple. It doesn't have to be complicated or fancy. 
And what I would really caution against is just don't be a gambler. So what we're doing here, we're buying liquid uh, ETF uh, puts and calls nearer in the money, far out in time, and then using these directional kind of uh, trading things. We just talked about the four or five things we can use, and then keep a close eye on those and then take profits when we can. Finally, the most important thing of all is risk management. I think this is the most overlooked uh, element of trading. You don't read much about it. You don't hear much about it. But pros start out every trade with thinking, how much can I lose? And that's about the opposite thing of what most people do is because they start out thinking about how much can I make. That's, I think, the wrong approach. So you start out with how much can I lose? And if that's accept acceptable, then you go ahead and set up the trade. So I think for option trading, you, 1 to 2% of your account is the most you want to risk uh, per trade. So let's say you have a $10,000 uh, uh, you know, trading uh, account. So 10,000 times you could risk 1% uh, would be $100 per trade. Pretty small, but that's it. You know, you take, uh, you take uh, short little risks, and it's like hitting singles and doubles, not trying to go for the whole money. Then diversify among asset classes. So that's pretty simple. Everybody knows you're supposed to diversify. But it really does make sense because if you're all in one thing, you're either going to be really right or really wrong. So we can be in Europe, we can be in gold, we can be in energy. What we've seen since the start of the financial crisis is much more of a correlation among asset classes. So diversifying is harder to do than it used to be. Everything tends to move together now. There's risk on and risk off. We have two asset classes. So maybe that's all you can get these days is risk on or risk off. But you do want to diversify as much as you can among different asset classes. And then when I'm trading options, you have to set you know, how much pain can you take? And in my view, you don't want to go much below or farther than a 50% loss. If you lose 50% on an option trade uh, using the kind of strategies we're talking about here, something's wrong. Either you missed it, it's not an accurate trade, or the market has changed, or you're running out of time. You know, something has happened uh, that, that's not positive. So 50%, if you go much below that, you're going to end up... Uh, digging a deep hole for yourself, and it's hard to get out. So going back to that $10,000 account, so 10000 1,000 is 100 <clears throat> You know, the most you can really trade is a $200 option because you lose half of it, that's your 1%. 2% will be double that, so 400 But a lot of these options we're talking about, you can buy one or two positions for 100 or 200 if you can. So as a small, you know, starting out with $10,000, you can still chip away at this and, and make money that eventually becomes meaningful. I would recommend, uh, suggest that you don't try for that home run because the odds are definitely against you uh, if you do. So that's our conclusion. We've got about two minutes left on my timer here, but we've talked about Europe, uh, the crisis in Cyprus. It goes way beyond Cyprus. Why all this matters to us? Spain and Italy are up next. I think we're going to see even before that Slovenia this week. Italy's upside down. And of course, who cares, America? Well, we talked we talk about fundamentally it matters. We're very tied at the hip with Europe. It's going to have impact us here in America. And we've talked about our best uh, European ETFs, and we've talked about some option trading strategies that you can use. And again, uh, some of the real parameters that count, uh, liquidity, uh, don't gamble, and the risk management being the most important of all. And I would say if you wrap all that together, as an individual, what we need to think about is, who am I? How am I going to do this? Set out a plan and, and run this thing like a business. Be a businessman. And, uh, and if you do those things, I'm very confident that all of you can be successful. Again, uh, you're in the right place here with the people at ETI, and I appreciate your time today. And uh, have a great uh, holiday weekend, and uh, we'll talk soon. Chuck, are you still there? Good morning. Hello, Chuck.